Right, uh, thank you. And then the, this I'm representing the uh, student body of <laughs> And uh, uh, good afternoon. So today I I'm going to present uh, my, uh, the work uh, about our century, which is trying to provide a continuous sensor services uh, against the random node failures. So the talk will be goes like this, sense network that's application and power statement. And we'll talk about the central basis strategy, strategy which is entry, and also so the, the robustness against the malicious nodes. And then finally, we'll be something about future work. Uh, so uh, nowadays, sense network has gained its ground in a lot of applications like habitat monitoring, intelligent environment, and uh, localization tracking. And, uh, in on the left, on the graph, uh, in the graph on the left, it's a typical application of uh, forest fire detection. Uh, when when the fire happens, the the, the node close to the so close to the event will detect detect the fire and will then forward the data uh, to the uh, sync nodes, which is in the deep blue. And uh, however. Currently, we have some kind of uh, dilemma in, in the sense network applications. On, on one hand, uh, they, these nodes are very error prone, and uh, and and once they are deployed, it's pretty much they will be untended. So, so to to pr to to make this network service robust, usually we provide a lot of uh, the sense nodes in 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 high in high de density. And keep all of them on. So as long as we have a specific number of sensor nodes uh, healthy, the network service is is working. However, usually the sensor nodes are driven by batteries, which usually only lasts a couple weeks and a couple months, maybe. But you, but sometimes we wanted the whole sensor network to last for like years. So come to the common practice is we try to pro prolong the network lifetime by uh, shifting by make the nodes work in shift. Which means every time we make, we only keep a minimal set of nodes active and turn off all the redundant nodes to preserve energy. So here, we can see whenever hap whenever something happens to the active nodes, the whole network surface will be seriously disrupted. So here we find a contradiction, and uh, here our, our, our algorithm architecture our comes to help. So uh, a lot of work has been. Uh, done on this topic, like ascent, they like in ascent, a redundant node decides its own state based on the information around its neighborhood, like neighbor number of active uh, numbers and packet loss ratio. But the issue ascent that it suffered is there are a lot of, there are frequent wake ups and uh, the sleep interval is fixed, which is not flexible at all. And also P's P's is P. Uh, we actually pretty much share the same goal as P's. However, in P's Redundant nodes decides the, the sleep interval independently in the, in, instead of being coordinated. And also OGDC, which is pretty much a theoretical framework, and it doesn't cons uh, consider any uh, random sensor failures. And before getting into details, I would like to introduce a sensing redundant set uh, idea. So <coughs> we, 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 uh, we partition the network field into grids. Into grids, and uh, and each node could uh, cover some of these greater points. So when all these greater points are covered, we call this network area is fully covered. So for example, for node A, it could cover the we, we number those greater points. So node A could cover the node one, two, three, four, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So here, so we call any any Neighbor node, any number nodes of A which has some kind of overlapping with A in terms of coverage, we call them the A's sensing redundant set. So here, like B, C, D, E, F, all has some degrees of overlap in terms of a coverage with node A. And also, we recognize that one node usually is not enough to cover the other node. So you. So previous research has shown like three to five nodes are needed to replace uh, a node sensing error. And we can say the same uh, in terms of the communication. And uh, knowing that, we, 
we try to group the sensing redundant set members into gains. So what is gains? A gain is uh, consist of the nodes which collectively could fully cover the, the target node. So th in, in this example, we already know A sensing redundancy is BCDF. And now we, could, we would say A's gain list is B, C, D, C, and D, F. Why? Because you, we can see B, B itself alone could cover the A 100%. Uh, uh, and the C and D together could cover the greater points A covers. So we can say the same to C and, and the D, F. So in our century, the advantage is we try to outbound, outbound the service loss time with delta. And our approach is active nodes schedule their gains to wake up in turn serving, the, serving as sentries, monitoring the health of the active node. So this, uh, in this slide, I will explain how the game-based scheduling works. So in this example, we have delta is 300. And since this active node has four gains, so the round cycle would be four delta. And uh, see, we can see this along this time axis, um, the active node scheduled the first game, BC, wake up, wake, wake up to wake up at 1,200. And the second game, uh, to wake up at 1,500, which is a delta, which is departed uh, by delta. And the third game wakes up at 1,800, which is like two delta wave from the, f the time where, when the first game wake up. So along, so with this way, all the wake ups of the games are evenly distributed. And uh, that way we could avoid the uh, redundant, unnecessary, uh, unnecessary wake ups and so that we can save energy. And, and but more important is, Whenever a failure happens, it could be caught within the time of delta. Then what? I don't think you need to go through. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, so, so results is is pretty much uh, the same as I presented in the before. So. This is um, along this uh, along this timeline, and uh, we can see the, act, the 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 number of active nodes in our century is pretty much uh, constant. And however, in P's, it's in, there will be some kind of ups and downs. So the the direct effect is our century could keep the uh, coverage ratio pretty much about ninety five percent. However, in P's, it it fails to keep the coverage ratio in a satisfy, uh, at a satisfactory ratio. So that's because it, it fails to keep a constant number of active nodes. So, with the, so now we talk about delta. Here, as we, if, as we increase the delta, we can see our century in our century, the average coverage loss time just uh, goes up as the delta goes up, which is what actually we wanted. And however, the P's don't show any meaningful trend of, over the delta. Though here there's kind of dip after the 400 seconds, but still the trend is not there. And the at the same time, as we increase delta, our section could still uh, maintain the uh, kind of constant 90% percentage network lifetime. However, P's still we c we couldn't see too much trending in this graph. And in terms of fault tolerance, if uh, if we increase the frequency of the of the failure, we can see. Our century could keep the average loss coverage loss time almost constant, and the P's they slight increase as we increase as we actually decrease the failure frequency. 
and here if we increase the failure period and we can see the uh, the network lifetime of both R central P's had uh, in increased slightly. Uh, that's because the frequency of the failure drops. So when we increase the failure percentage, which is the number of nodes die when the when the catastrophic event happens, so uh, R century is able to. Uh, keep the coverage loss time constant as the failure percentage increases and the P's just also show some weird uh, trend which I still need to find out why and, uh, <coughs> and in terms of the lifetime both of them just decreases as the failure percentage increases which is uh, intuitive uh, scalability as the number of nodes increases, R century still uh, demonstrates a very good uh, fault tolerance capability. Um, this is the uh, average covered service last time, and this is the network lifetime. And uh, also about uh, robust against the malicious attacks. So the attack could be passive, like uh, just active node, just pretend, just don't provide any service to the uh, whole network, which we can just pretty much think, uh, take it as a failed node. However, for active attacks, it will send a spoiled schedule to try to decre uh, dis destroy, uh, disrupt the network service or uh, de uh, decrease the network lifetime. However, because uh, because all redundant nodes follow the schedule for multiple active nodes, so a single active node is just is just not sufficient to a seriously degraded performance. Only, only when a redundant is surrounded by uh, several uh, malicious nodes, this attack could uh, take effect in uh, in the R century. Uh, in the future work, we could try to evaluate the impact of the malicious attacks to both schemes, uh, to the schemes, and also uh, we will evaluate the defense scheme uh, through simulation and. Uh, Finally, we will try to implement it on the Berkeley modes. Okay, uh, that's it.